There are multiple theories on how the world first started. There's the theory of the Big Bang, there's the theory of God, and of course the theory of evolution. Although the last one doesn't explain how so many planets were created, it does explain how humans exist as we are now. Still, the theory of evolution is more of a hypothesis than an actual theory. Some people believe the idea behind it is simply nonsense. Others, however, are convinced it clearly explains how we exist in this world. Either way, each person is free to believe what they want, and we respect that. The theory of evolution was first formulated in Charles Darwin's book On the Origin of Species in 1859. It tries to explain how everything goes through a process in which organisms change over time as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioral traits. Taking that as a base, the belief that we evolved from primates has grown to become pretty popular among people all over the world. And perhaps that is why a couple of psychologists, Maurice Temerlin and his wife Jane, decided to embark on a controversial experiment in 1964. Back then, they both decided to adopt a female chimpanzee who they named Lucy. Lucy was supposed to live a quiet life as a free primate who could do and act as she wanted. Instead, the couple of scientists decided to raise her as if she was a human, and as if she was her daughter. Eventually, Lucy started to grow, and believe it or not, she learned to eat at the table with a knife and fork. Not only that, but she also learned how to communicate using American Sign Language. Unfortunately, Lucy reached a stage in which she started to become aggressive and took on worrying human characteristics. As a result, Jane and Maurice had to take action. Now before getting to that, let's cover a little bit of the background story. Lucy began life in a colony of carnival chimps in Florida. But sometime later, she was given to Oklahoma's Institute of Primal Studies. There, she met Jane and Maurice, a couple of spouses who took the decision to adopt the little primate. For which, by the way, they became pretty famous. They took Lucy to their home, and right from the beginning, they started to treat her as if she was a little human. She wore diapers, drank from a bottle, and got warm cuddles from her parents. As Lucy got older, she learned to do lots of other things. She could now get dressed by herself, make tea, and sit at the table when it was time to eat. The best of her accomplishments, though? Communicating through sign language. The primate was able to use the language to describe certain feelings, such as sadness when her mom left the house, or when she was dirty. It all seemed to be working according to plan. Lucy was indeed a human trapped in a chimpanzee's body. Unfortunately, things took a bad turn when Lucy's behavior began to change. In 1972, primatologist Jane Goodall paid Lucy a visit, hoping to be amazed by seeing with her own eyes everything she had heard about her. Instead, she ended up witnessing how the primate made herself a gin and tonic and then sat on the couch and drank it while watching television. Unfortunately, Lucy's bad behavior didn't stop there. She went from violent outbursts to even masturbating in public. Maurice and Jane had no idea of how to act from there. The chimp had become too much for them, and when Lucy reached her sexual maturity, her parents thought it would be a good idea for her to meet a male chimp. Lucy, however, disagreed. The chimp was no longer just acting as if she was human, she now truly believed she was one. From that point of view, the experiment performed on the primate to see how she could become a human was a complete success. Lucy's refusal of the male chimp signified just how dramatic the change had been. But, despite having succeeded, Jane and Maurice thought Lucy had become too aggressive for them to keep in the house. So, after a long talk, they decided that the best thing would be to send her to a sanctuary in Africa where there would be other chimpanzees. Located on an island in the Gambian River in West Africa, the Chimpanzee Rehabilitation Trust Camp awaited her. The couple of psychologists didn't want Lucy to suffer through the transition, so they hired a psychology graduate student from the University of Oklahoma, Janice Carter, to stay on the island with her for a few weeks. But, Lucy had grown as a human, and it was hard for her to adapt to her new surroundings. This way, what was supposed to be a three-week treat for Janice, became a decade-long residency in Gambia. Lucy's need was so great that she felt unable to leave. Eventually, the chimp began to get used to her new place. For Janice, this was a clear sign that she had to make an exit and move on with her life. So, with sadness in her heart, she left the reserve and went back to her country. A year later, however, she returned with a film crew. And upon her arrival, she and Lucy were reunited, and the two of them shared a warm hug. But as soon as the cuddle was over, the chimp wandered away. This was a clear indication that the primate had finally integrated into her own environment. Confident that everything was okay, Janice decided to leave once again. But only 12 months later, Lucy was found dead. Her bones were discovered in the camp where she was supposed to live free and safe. Reports indicated that Lucy disappeared in September of 1987, and her partial skeleton was discovered weeks later, with her hands and feet missing. The cause of her death was not clear, but some believed that human hunters had killed the poor animal. The rehabilitation camp, however, denied that such a thing could have ever happened. Instead, they released a statement on its website, claiming that Lucy could have died from depression, disease, a fall, 
drowning, or even a snake bite. Time happened and people forgot about the case, but not without criticizing both Jane and Maurice for raising the poor chimp as a human and then abandoning her in a place where she could not survive on her own. <laughs>